making your scorecard grid easy to use. The scoring grid is the most important part of the scorecard. Well-designed grids are important for golfers. You need to make sure it is easy to use, well-organized, and as decluttered as possible. Here are a couple pointers to keep in mind when you're designing your grid. First off, the placement of your tees. There are two different ways of arranging your tees. You can split them up into men's and women's tees, like the card on the left, or put them all at the top of the grid, like the card on the right. If you have a lot of tees, splitting them up can be a good way of avoiding confusion over which tees are men's and which tees are women's. On the other hand, if your tees are gender neutral, you might want to stack them all at the top and use color coding to differentiate one tee from another. You'll have to experiment with your grid and see what looks best. Now, look for ways to reduce the total number of rows on the grid. This will allow your scoring lines to be larger and usually makes your grid more aesthetically appealing. For starters, we can combine par lines using a slash if there are any differences. Sometimes you can combine handicap lines as well, again using a slash if needed. If there are too many differences between the men's and women's handicaps, you might want to leave them as two separate lines. Plus, if you separate the T lines, it helps to identify the top tees as men's tees and the bottom tees as women's tees, especially if you include the genders on the handicap lines. If you are unsure which way would be better, ask your scorecard designer for their advice. If you've got combo tees, you can use an entirely separate row or use arrows, circles, or diamonds to indicate which tee to use. You'll probably end up with some extra space after consolidating these rows, which means you can widen your scoring area. You want the scoring part of the grid to be as big as possible. Golfers need enough space to write their names, record their scores, and put down any other info they need, like their member number. If your grid is still looking too crowded and you've got room on your rules panel, you can migrate the rating and slope info to a different part of the card. Keep in mind that if you have a lot of cart play, you'll want to move essential info like hole numbers to the middle of the grid. The steering wheel clips in the carts cover up the top half inch of info, so anything your golfers are going to need should be moved down. Finally, consider the use of color on your grid. This is a standard looking grid, with the background of the tee rows colored in. If you're going for a more conservative look, you might want to color the yardage numbers instead of the background. See how much more subdued that makes it? Now let's compare. We've gone from three handicap lines to two, combined the par lines, and went from separate combo lines to circles. The extra space has gone to enlarging the scoring grid. Which grid would your golfers rather use? Before we bring this section to a close, let's have a brief discussion about vertical grids. Vertical grids are not very common, and the courses that do use them tend to be conservative private facilities. In the early days of golf, most scorecards were printed with vertical grids, the idea being that it was easier to do math when the numbers were stacked on top of each other. Although most courses have long since transitioned to horizontal grids, clubs that want to emphasize their respect for tradition might choose to use a vertical grid. Vertical grids are functionally the same as horizontal grids. There are no particular advantages or disadvantages to using a vertical grid over a horizontal one. Also remember to orient your grid properly. When you open the scorecard, make sure the top of the grid is on the left-hand side and the bottom of the grid is on the right-hand side. Finally, many cards with vertical grids use a horizontal or landscape orientation on the front cover. If you have a photo on your front cover, consider how it would look as a landscape layout. We covered a lot of material in this section. To recap, here are some of the main things we talked about. You can put all your tees on the top of the grid or split them up with men's on top and women's on bottom. Try both options and see which looks better. Reduce the total number of rows on the grid by combining handicap lines, combining par lines, or using arrows, circles, or diamonds to indicate combos instead of using a separate tee line. 
Make the scoring part of the grid as large as possible. In some cases, you might want to decrease the height of the T-lines in order to up the height of the scoring boxes. If your grid looks too crowded, consider moving the rating and slope info to a different part of the card, like the rules panel. If you've got a lot of cart play, move essential info like whole numbers to the middle of the grid. If you're going for a more conservative look, color the yardage numbers instead of the background of the T-rows. Some clubs use vertical grids. If you want one on your card, just make sure that when you open the scorecard, the top of the grid is on the left-hand side and the bottom of the grid is on the right-hand side.